While not a giant leap forward in the city building category, City Skylines 2 is still one of the best. This newest version of our favorite city builder has much improved graphics, a couple of cool new systems, and some really bad traffic. One of the things that made the first game so great was the robust modding community. At launch, City Skylines 2 was missing mods. Well, not anymore. Let's talk mods in City Skylines 2. Hi, it's Drax. This is the part at the beginning of the video that everyone skips. For those of you that didn't jump forward, enjoy watching and listening. Might you consider supporting me further by visiting my Ko-fi or clicking on the join button on this video? All right, that's it. Back to the video. In this video, I will show you how to find the mods and install them. I'll also share with you a couple of my favorites. While I've had a lot of fun playing City Skylines 2 over the last few months, I do have some frustrations with the game, and I think a couple of these new mods will help. All the mods can be found on the main menu in the game, the process is super simple. Click Paradox Mods to open the Mods menu. Here you'll find a list of all the mods that can be installed. Once you've found the mod you want to install, click Add to Active Playset. If there are dependencies for the mod, it will ask you to install those as well. Now you're all set. In some cases, you may need to restart the game. I think it's just good practice to do a restart. First on my list is Find It. Yes, it does exactly what the name suggests. It allows you to quickly search for any item in the game. Where I think this mod shines is that instead of having to open and close each and every tab, you can now open the finder and have everything at your fingertips. This mod has it all, not just buildings, but all the assets in the game. I love that you can set favorites and then have quick access to all the school buildings. The other cool addition is the picker. This might actually be my favorite part of this mod. You can see the new eyedropper tool on your toolbar. When you select that eyedropper, you can then click on an item, like this school for instance, and it opens the build menu. Now you're ready to build yet another school. It's super helpful when building roads. Uh, what kind of road is that? No idea. Ah, picker tool. Oh, it's a six lane. Cool. Let's build some more of that. So good. Another smartly named mod is Move It. Yes, you guessed it, this mod allows you to move items in the game. Now, not everything in the game, but a good number of things. Trees, buildings, surfaces, nodes, and segment curves. I find myself using this mod to give the road a little nudge or a bend. A lot of the items in the game have the ability to move already, but it's just nice to click the icon and move the building, road, or whatever without having to think about it. Traffic is a bit of a mess in City Skylines too. So much of my time is spent reworking roads and intersections, trying to help traffic flow. The Traffic mod is a copy from City Skylines 1, and it deals with intersection flow, which, if you've spent any time playing this game, you'll know is less than ideal. The Traffic mod allows you to highlight the intersection and then control how each lane interacts with the other lanes. You know, it's such a simple idea and honestly something that should have been added into the base game especially because it was such a popular mod in City Skylines 1. So, let's say you want all the traffic to go straight. Sure, we can do that. Hey, don't like U-turns? Remove them. Stop unsafe, awkward left turns? You bet. Great mod. One of my biggest complaints when playing City Skylines 2 was the natural resources are not in the most convenient places. Sure, this is realistic, but come on, it's a game! The extra landscaping tool mod gives you the ability to add natural resource areas as you see fit. Want to create that perfect farm land zone away from the city? You can! It works for all the resources. Yep, oil fields as far as the eye can see. You can also bring up the menu, and this will give you the ability to refill depleted resources. Which feels a bit cheater mode, but it's not automatic, so it's up to you whether you do it or don't. There are also additional brush mechanics for those of you looking for a bit more control. For a person who wants to choose where the resources live in the city, this is a must-have mod. Anarchy! I have mixed feelings about this mod. The error checking in City Skylines 2 is needed. Without it, I would guess that our friendly citizens would have a hard time finding the correct path home. The error check keeps the roads and sidewalks looking normal. The cool thing about the Anarchy mod is that it can be easily turned on and off, so it's not something that's universal throughout the game. You get to choose when to create Anarchy. 
When building a footpath with air check on and it's not cooperating, click the anarchy button. Voila! Now you can place it. It has many uses and results may vary. I guess my advice is to use at your own risk. The abandoned building removal is just as it says. When there's an abandoned building in City Skylines 2, the game wants you to grab your bulldozer and replace it. I'm not sure what the thought process is here. Maybe, hey Drax, your neighborhood is bad, you need to clean it up. The funny thing is, as soon as you destroy it, the game just builds another building. It seems like a waste of time. This mod automates the process. Thank you. I've saved the best for last. The Extended Tooltip Mod. Information is key in any game, and in a city builder, especially one of this size, you need info. The information for each of the buildings and zones is in the base game. You just have to do a lot of clicking. The Extended Tooltip Mod takes away the clicking and shows you the information when you hover your mouse. Let's check out the school. Hovering over it, you can see the efficiency, the employees, and the number of students. How about this rock quarry? We can see the level, five of five, the efficiency, and whether or not it's profitable. Especially in the early game, seeing the power plant's percentage of power produced is great. This will allow you to quickly see how long it's gonna be before you gotta build some more power. I'm constantly looking at the ridership of my public transit. Looking at this terminal, we can see how many people are waiting and the average wait time. Helpful! My personal favorite is zone information. This is something I'm always looking at. Mainly, I'm looking at what type of residential zone, low, medium, high. Having this information on the hover just makes upgrading zones so much easier. I will never understand why the base game makes it so hard to see what type of zone I'm looking at. Extended tooltip should be in the base game. So damn good. Thank you, mod developer. You've made City Skylines 2 so much better for this city builder. One final note before we finish. I love roundabouts, in real life and in city skylines. The current selection in the game is lacking. Here's a link to another video I made about my love of roundabouts in city skylines. I thought for sure there would be a couple of cool roundabout mods. Sadly, there are not. I guess I'm asking, can we get a cool roundabout mod please? Thanks. There are a lot of mods for city skylines too. These are just a few I've been using in my cities. I'd love to see your list. Share your favorite mods with me in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you soon. The video's over. Now it's time for you to do your part. Follow, like, and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.